Hello everyone, this is DJ from Grash from Disney Academy, and in this short tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a camera flight through animation on an Apple PC. So let's jump straight into Blender. Uh, this time I've opened uh, Blender 2.80 Beta. Here's the scene that uh, was created throughout the course of Loft Interior series on our channel, so if you haven't followed it, you can check it out. Generally, you can use any kind of scene that you created. This will be like very simple animation, just uh, animating the camera movement. So first I'll, I need to reframe this a little bit. I, I want the camera to get a little bit closer to, to my room, here to the to the door, and I want this camera to move from the right side to the left side in slow movement uh, from left to right. So let's first grab the camera, like select, select the object, grab it, and to constrain the movement to an axis, let's press Z twice, and it's a local Z axis, so we'll just zoom in. For more tips on operating the camera, you can check our latest tutorial of the series. So now we have the starting position. Maybe let's turn on the wireframe view so that we can see all the objects. I've set up uh, the timeline to be 60 frames for the animation, so by default it's 250. Just type in the number of frames you're going for. When going for an animation, you need to check out the settings. It's here. or in the 2.79 it's also in the general render settings in the dimensions section where you set up the frame dimensions you can set up the frame rate here so 24 frames per second is the traditional cinema frame rate but you can set up all of the you know, like most typical frame rates here up to 60 frames per second now let's go here to frame 1 and select our camera object click on it or you can use the outliner here to select the camera and when you have it selected we'll just enter keyframes to m make it move uh, on the Y axis as we grab and press Y so you can see it's in this direction so the Y uh, location right now is set up here in the transform panel in the right tab so we can hover our mouse over this and click the right mouse button and then Add a single keyframe, insert single keyframe. Uh, you could just press I and uh, insert location keyframe, but this will uh, keyframe all of the settings. And we'll just just for keeping things more clear and simple, we'll just uh, keyframing the Y location because the other ones won't change. So we have uh, the first keyframe, and you can see that in the timeline we have uh, these little dots here appearing. And now to really make uh, a movement, we have to set up the last frame of the animation. Now position our camera just in the place where we want the movement to end. So probably around here will be fine. Cool. You can see it uh, changed the value here and the color changed because uh, this value is not keyframed yet. So let's press and insert another single keyframe here. You can see the color changed to this greenish, or in 2.79 it was uh, like brighter green. That is of course theme dependent. So right now we have two keyframes, and when you go and scroll the timeline, you can see the Blender automatically interpolates the movement. So uh, meaning that uh, it calculates the position in all of the frames between the keyframes. Now the quite important setting that you have to be aware of. So if you go to preferences. In the animation tab, you have a setting of default interpolation. Right now, I have mine set to linear, but by default, it's uh, Bezier. And what it means is that when you set up keyframes, right now it's calculating this linearly, so the uh, speed of the movement will be constant. And with Bezier interpolation, it will be easing in and out, so like smoothly increasing the speed at the beginning and then just easing out. In the end, and that can also be changed and ed edited through uh, animation curves. And this is a tool that will be used a lot if you go deeper into animation. So in the animation uh, workspace here, you have the dope sheet, and this is a uh, thing to, to look for your keyframes and stuff. You can also, of course, zoom in and out of this uh, timeline here. And you could edit this stuff, for example, if you wanted to, the camera to move a little bit faster and go from the same place to the other, uh, it will be a shorter move. So if you move this keyframe, for example, grab it, 
and just move it to the 40th frame and you can see right now if you play back the animation it's going just a little bit faster and you can see in the dope sheet that we move this and you can see it moved these frames here. I have other dots here because I've animated the other camera in this before recording so generally you can see that these are the frames for our camera the object transforms and you can see it's a Y location that's transforming have it for a camera camera action and the camera action is the change of Y location and let's get this back into our 60th frame and now I wanted to show you the curves here this window is called the graph editor and this is a useful thing for animation so you can you can see the starting and the ending frame of the animation and our action here which is object transforms Y location so this is the curve showing this movement and right now we have the interpolation set to linear and this is showing the value change across time so if you want to, uh, the camera to go a little bit farther you just need to grab this a little bit up you can see that this really shows how far the camera goes change of the value of Y location here in the right panel you can change the interpolation mode for selected points so you can box select these curves you can change the interpolation to Bezier that's the default one and you'll see the change it's a slight change but if we go and crank this up even more like this we'll see that the movement in the beginnings will be like almost not visible so slowly it starts moving faster and then eases out select these one two once again and change it to linear so we've got our camera movement set up. Let's set up the bus part 2 here and let's see the shot, how it goes. You can also disable the overlays here to see just the objects. I kind of like the way it moves. Let me quickly show you another cool thing that you can animate. So I set up a camera like this with a quite wide angle. 15 millimeters focal length and we'll animate exactly that value so in this first frame of our sequence hover the mouse over focal length and press i to keyframe the value and there you go we have a keyframe for this one and let's quickly move to the last frame and let's set this up to be 50. we get a close-up shot like this and we'll keyframe this as well and right now when you play back the animation you get this kind of dolly zoom effect so I'm trying to keep things simple here but this keyframing technique is really powerful so if you unleash your creativity you can go really crazy like this things are about to move that's a cool shot and I can just quickly send it to the farm You have to go probably to quite high number of samples in such a scene that's pretty noisy like the interior scene. When going for a still shot sometimes you can get away with some noise but in the animation uh, the noise might be quite obviously like flickering or moving from frame to frame. We want as noiseless image as possible for each frame so let's go to 2000 samples. I will be rendering this using our render farm and using the two pointer AD. It's still in beta but it's already supported in our farm. so. Be careful with using this, but you can experiment. I got pretty decent results with it, with not much uh, trouble. So now let's go to the dimension settings of the output. And the output is really important right now because we will be rendering the frames, 60 frames, and with a step of 1. The step is an important setting if you want to make a test render for the animation and you don't want to render all of the frames, but just a few frames from the whole sequence. So for example, if you set a step of 20, you will just render every 20th frame. So like the first frame, the 20th frame, the 40th, and so on. So it's a good thing to test if everything goes quite as planned uh, in the final render, you can also make test renders with less samples or smaller resolution. And before rendering the final shot, you'll be able to check if everything worked fine. 
because later on it might be harder, there's always an option to render a piece of frame that's somehow broken or rendered incorrectly with the border and later on composite it. But we'll be covering the compositing tricks and stuff in a separate tutorial. And now let's go downwards here in the output panel. I've set the frames to be rendered to open ESR multi-layer. You need to set up also the passes that you want to render in a panel of the view layer and all of the passes are stored in a single file that you can then later on use for compositing purposes when you want to just tweak uh, small elements after rendering. So it's good to keep that in mind or you can just uh, render this to PNG. Now the choice is up to you. Render the beauty shot to a single PNG file or render all of the passes to a multi-layer EXR. So pick the pill that you want. The blue pill or the red pill. Just remember that once you start compositing, things will never look the same again. So, in the view layer, you can set up the passes here. And that's the important part if you want to go for compositing later on, so you need to check box every pass that you want to be rendered separately. What we'll be using in the future tutorials is definitely the emission pass, because it will leave us with just the lights that are emitted, so for example these light bulbs here, and we will be able to separately deal with this, adding some glow and stuff. And the environment, so we'll have the or uh, light going through the windows in a separate pass that we can then use it as a mask or just to transform the image somehow. All of the other passes like ambient occlusion can be used also to crank up the contrast and bumpiness of the textures, uh, adding some further depth to the image. And then there's the denoising and that's the new feature in 2.80 to have the denoising as a pass. so that the denoised and undenoised image are rendered in this final file and you can mix them, blend them together or you can uh, like use parts of the denoised image if you get some strange artifacts in some areas but you have to set up the denoising data pass. It's good to know anyway that this is available right now in Blender. So if you have never rendered with us before and you haven't tried out the farm yet, you can register, getting some free credits. Let me show you a quick trick to get even more credits for a start. You go to Solutions, Blender, it'll lead you to our landing page dedicated to Blender users, providing $50 free credits for a start. This plus the 33% discount. Check it out and try using the farm. Let's make sure that the beamer is running and let's beam it up to the farm. Okay, it's running and let's beam it up. So the beamer uploads the files and then you can just click to submit and it redirects you straight to our web manager where you can set up the priority whether you're in a hurry or not. The price is also dependent on that as so well. Use low. You can set up the step here if you want just this test render or if you want to run the full animation you go with step one you can change the resolution here as well and you can set up sample level to which you want to render and if you press submit the job will start rendering so the frames have rendered and we have a nice sequence of 60 EXRs and we'll use them for compositing so in the next part I'll show you how to change these EXRs to composited PNG frames like these. So I'll be showing you how to transform these frames, adding some glow effects and glare. So a little bit of compositing, but this will be covered in a separate tutorial. And then in the next part, I'll show you how to use the video sequence editor to render a movie file from these. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it. Be sure to follow the next parts that are coming really, really soon. I've got them already recorded, so just need a little bit of editing. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and click the bell button to get notified whenever new releases come out. And also join the live streams and be up to date with what's going on on our academy and in the Blender world. So have fun and keep blending.